My point is this. Everybody in this room at one point or another has lost their job, okay, or lost their gig. But it happened to you privately. What happened to me was very public. And I'm cool with that, that's just what happened, that's the business I'm in. But what was strange is that because it was so public, everywhere I go in the last three, four months, people just come up to me. If I'm at an ATM, if I'm at a sub shop, <laughs> I'm just trying to relate, man. <laughs> We all know I don't go outside. <laughs> if my butler brings me some flan, no, I'm so, <laughs> so stupid. But anyway, my point is this. I will be walking around, I walk around, I'll be pumping gas, I'll be doing something, and people just walk right up to me and ask me. The blood to me, they'll be like, hey man. <laughs> this is like if Cheech and Chong come up to me. <laughs> oh, Cheech and Chong, it's incredible. I'm like, hey man, how's your mind? That's your mental state, man. How you doing? I'm like, okay, hippies, I'll tell you. <laughs> I went through something that was pretty traumatic. So I went to a therapist. And the first thing the therapist explained to me, the therapist said, Conan, you are experiencing a loss. And when people experience a loss, they have to work through what's called these different stages of mourning to get better. It's very common. Then the therapist said, if you are a talk show host, there are eight distinct stages of mourning that you have to walk through. Any talk show host who has gone through what you've gone through has to work through eight stages of mourning. Me, Arsenio, we had to get through it. We had to work through it. Arsenio called me and was like, hey man, it was rough for a while. And, then... and it's tough. And you've got to work through these stages to get well. And the first stage is denial. Bad. And it's such a bad stage, I put it up in giant letters. Denial. I was in bad, bad there was a period of about six weeks after I lost The Tonight Show when I thought I was still on television. <laughs> Even when I was alone in my house, I thought cameras were still shooting me all the time because I was so used to it. So at night, I'd finish making love to my wife and I'd turn to a camera that wasn't there and I'd say, stay tuned for Carson Daly. <laughs> and then he'd show up. <laughs> and he's a caring lover. <laughs> Stage two, blame myself. I didn't spend a lot of time on this stage, because <laughs> what the hell did I do? I didn't do anything. <laughs> I was standing around, minding my own business. So I blew up this stage, and I went to a much cooler, better stage, stage three. Blame everyone else around me. <laughs> yes! USA! You... <laughs> I'm going to keep trying. And uh, I thought, I was furious. And that led, of course, to stage four, anger. I was really angry. And I was so freaking angry about this whole thing. And I wasn't just angry that I wasn't on television anymore. I was angry that I don't get to be on TV anymore, but other people still do. That's what made me crazy. Paul O'Brien doesn't get to be on TV, but these other people do. Now, I don't want to be petty and name names. That's not who I am. But what I will do, and you shouldn't name those names either, because even you naming them could get my ass thrown in jail. No, no, don't say his name. Stop that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, no, 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 no. Let's get something straight, Radio City. That was my impression of rapper Ludacris. That, the, yes, that was my impression of Ludacris. I'm getting my ass sued. That's my, my arm's gonna drop. That's my, that's my Ludacris. That's my Ludacris impression. So we'll get our story straight here when we talk to the cops later on. <laughs> the cops are coming. Oh, Mr. O'Brien, I hear you're making fun of someone. <laughs> Hi, caricature of a policeman. Uh, oh, be gosh, be gosh. But I'm not going to I'm not gonna do that. I'm not going to name names because that would be small and petty. But what I will do is show you pictures of these people as I name their names. Isn't that a better idea? Yeah! yeah! Woo! Kim Kardashian has a television show. <laughs> I don't have a television show, but Kim Kardashian has a television show. Snooki has a television show. <laughs> she doesn't care. Boo all you want. She's got a microphone and her mini skirt. She doesn't care. This, on, on Animal Planet, this group of meerkats has a television show. <laughs> Which, by the way, is excellent. <laughs> yeah, they sing barbershop harmonies together, and they're really good. Except the one on the far left sucks.
<laughs> look at him, you can look at his eyes. He's like, I'm not as good as the others. I don't know. My brother got me in. This guy covered in question marks has a television <laughs> show. Not me, him. Look at him laughing at me. Illusionist Chris Angel has a television show. Uh. Look at that guy. And that's his only illusion, staring at you through a rectangle he made with his two bare hands. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy on television who just makes cakes. That's all he does, and he's called the Cake Boss. You like the Cake Boss? I will come into that crowd and thrash you with these chicken legs. Thank you for that. This guy, all he does on TV is make it a cake. With his comically oversized whisk. That's it. Now, I could forgive that. I can allow that. Maybe there needs to be a guy on TV who just makes cakes. But there's a second guy who just makes cakes <laughs> called the Ace of Cakes. <laughs> no! I'm sorry. Look at the smirk on that douchebag. <laughs> you got to be pretty amazing to smirk. What is it you do, guy? I make cakes. <laughs> <laughs> flour and an egg. <laughs> so, uh, that was for you. Stage number five, paranoia. I he was crazy, man. I started hearing voices in my head, strange voices saying, Daddy, we need food. <laughs> Voices saying, sir, you can't sleep on Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> and if you do, put your penis back in your pants. It's touching Ed Asner's star. <laughs> We've all done it right, guys, huh? Woo! What are you talking about? I have nothing. <laughs> you freak. It's like, yeah, oh, God. We've got a lot of young people here, so you've probably been through stage six. Stage six is intense. 36 hours of Red Bull and Halo. <laughs> Playing Halo, drinking Red Bull and playing Halo, and drinking Red Bull and playing Halo, and drinking Bible. And my wife is in the room. Honey, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I got good at Halo though. <laughs> yeah, I totally toned Skater Dude 4. <laughs> it was epic ownage. <laughs> And no, I don't know what I just said. <laughs> a 17-year-old kid says, say this, it'll kill. I'm out of here. Skateboard. <laughs> Kick stop. <laughs> Baggy shorts. Little weird beard. Contempt for authority. <laughs> Woo! Stage seven. Buying everything Amazon says I would also like. <laughs> I bought a Twilight Team Edward thong. Woo! I'm wearing it now. <laughs> really hurts. <clears throat> then, there's that final step. This is the step where I got well. It's the final step. One day, I got out of bed, I looked myself in the mirror, I said, quit your whining, grow a pair, and get your ass back to New York City! Yeah! 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 And I was in the next generation. And I don't even know which Kennedy I'm impersonating right now. This may be Mayor Quimby. 